Hello my friends, in this video we are going to know about Rani Lakshmi Bai. We will present you with the biography of Rani Lakshmi Bai, who was an epitome of bravery and courage. Also share our freed and fighter stories to your children's. So let's start. Lakshmi Bai was the second heroine to be martyred for freedom. The Rani of Jhansi was an Indian queen, the Maharani consort of the Maratha princely state of Jhansi from 1843 to 1853 as the wife of Maharaja Gangadhar Rao. She was one of the leading figures of the Indian Rebellion of 1857 and became a symbol of resistance to the British Raj for Indian nationalists. Early life A miniature portrait of Rani Lakshmibai Rani Lakshmibai was born on 19 November 1828, some sources say 1835, in the town of Varanasi into a Marathi Karhad Brahman family. She was named Mani Karnika Tambe and was nicknamed Manu. Her father was Moropant Tambe and her mother Bhagirathi Sapre, Bhagirathi Bai. Her parents came from the Tambe village of the Guhagar Taluka located in the Ratnagiri district of Maharashtra. Her mother died when she was four years old. Her father was the commander of the war of Kalyan Prant. Her father worked for Peshwa Baji Rao the second of Bithur district. The Peshwa called her Chabili, which means beautiful and lively and cheerful. She was educated at home and was taught to read and write and was more independent in her childhood than others of her age. Her studies included shooting, horsemanship, fencing and malakhamba with her childhood friends Nana Sahib and Tantia Tope. Rani Lakshmibai contrasted many of the patriarchal cultural expectations for women in India's society at this time. And she was known for her unique perspectives and her courage to fight against social norms even in front of the whole society. Rani Lakshmibai was accustomed to riding on horseback accompanied by escorts between the palace and the temple, although sometimes she was carried in a palanquin. Her horses included Sarangi, Pavan and Badal. According to historians she rode Badal when escaping from the fort in 1858. Her palace, the Rani Mahal, has now been converted into a museum. It houses a collection of archaeological remains of the period between the 9th and 12th centuries AD. History of Jhansi, 1842 May 1857 Manikarnika was married to the Maharaja of Jhansi, Gangadhar Rao Nevalkar, in May 1842 and was afterwards called Lakshmi Bai, or Lakshmi Bai, in honor of the Hindu goddess Devi Lakshmi and according to the Maharashtrian tradition of women being given a new name after marriage. In September 1851, she gave birth to a boy, later named Damodar Rao, who died four months after birth due to a chronic illness. The Maharaja adopted a child called Anand Rao, the son of Gangadhar Rao's cousin, who was renamed Damodar Rao, on the day before the Maharaja died. The adoption was in the presence of the British political officer who was given a letter from the Maharaja instructing that the child be treated with respect and that the government of Jhansi should be given to his widow for her lifetime. After the death of the Maharaja in November 1853, because Damodar Rao, born Anand Rao, was an adopted son, the British East India Company, under Governor General Lord Dalhousie, applied the doctrine of lapse, rejecting Damodar Rao's claim to the throne and annexing the state to its territories. When she was informed of this she cried out, Main apni jansi nahi dungi, I shall not surrender my jansi. In March 1854, Rani Lakshmibai was given an annual pension of 60,000 rupees and ordered to leave the palace and the fort. Rani Jhansi was determined not to give up Jhansi. She strengthened its defences and assembled a volunteer army. Women were also given military training. Rani's forces were joined by warriors including Gulam Ghos Khan, Dust Khan, Kuda Baksh, Lala Bhav Bakshi, Moti Bai, Sundar Munda, Kashi Bai, Divan Raghunath Singh and Divan Jawahar Singh. While this was happening in Jhansi, on May 10, 1857 the sepoy, soldier, mutiny of India started in Merat. This would become the starting point for the rebellion against the British. It began after rumours were put about that the new bullet casings for their Enfield rifles were coated with pork, beef fat, pigs being taboo to Muslims and cows sacred to Hindus and thus forbidden to eat. British commanders insisted on their use and started to discipline anyone who disobeyed. 
During this rebellion many British civilians, including women, and children were killed by the sepoys. The British wanted to end the rebellion quickly. Meanwhile, unrest began to spread throughout India and in May of 1857, the first war of Indian independence erupted in numerous pockets across the northern subcontinent. During this chaotic time, the British were forced to focus their attentions elsewhere, and Lakshmi Bai was essentially left to rule Jhansi alone. During this time, her qualities were repeatedly demonstrated as she was able swiftly and efficiently to lead her troops against skirmishes breaking out in Jhansi. Through this leadership Lakshmi Bai was able to keep Jhansi relatively calm and peaceful in the midst of the empire's unrest. Up to this point, she had been hesitant to rebel against the British, and there is still some controversy over her role in the massacre of the British HEIC officials and their wives and children on 8 June 1857 at Jokhan Bagh. Her hesitation finally ended when British troops arrived under Sir Hugh Rose and laid siege to Jhansi on 23 March 1858. Rani Jhansi with her faithful warriors decided not to surrender. The fighting continued for about two weeks. Shelling on Jhansi was very fierce. In the Jhansi army women were also carrying ammunition and were supplying food to the soldiers. Rani Lakshmi Bai was very active. She herself was inspecting the defence of the city. She rallied her troops around her and fought fiercely against the British. An army of 20,000, headed by the rebel leader Tatya Tope, was sent to relieve Jhansi and to take Lakshmi Bai to freedom. However, the British, though numbering only 1,540 in the field so as not to break the siege, were better trained and disciplined than the raw recruits, and these inexperienced soldiers turned and fled shortly after the British began to attack on 31 March. Lakshmi Bai's forces could not hold out and three days later the British were able to breach the city walls and capture the city. Yet Lakshmi Bai escaped over the wall at night and fled from her city, surrounded by her guards, many of whom were from her women's military. Along with the young Damodar Rao, the Rani decamped to Kalpi along with her forces where she joined other rebel forces, including those of Tatya Tope. The Rani and Tatya Tope moved on to Gwalior, where the combined rebel forces defeated the army of the Maharaja of Gwalior after his armies deserted to the rebel forces. They then occupied the strategic fort at Gwalior. However on the second day of fighting, on the 18th of June 1858, the Rani died. An army of 20,000, headed by the rebel leader Tatya Tope, was sent to relieve Jhansi and to take Lakshmi Bai to freedom. However, the British, though numbering only 1,540 in the field so as not to break the siege, were better trained and disciplined than the raw recruits, and these inexperienced soldiers turned and fled shortly after the British began to attack on 31 March. Lakshmi Bai's forces could not hold out and three days later the British were able to breach the city walls and capture the city. Yet Lakshmi Bai escaped over the wall at night and fled from her city, surrounded by her guards, many of whom were from her women's military. Along with the young Damodar Rao, the Rani decamped to Kalpi along with her forces where she joined other rebel forces, including those of Tatya Tope. The Rani and Tatya Tope moved on to Gwalior, where the combined rebel forces defeated the army of the Maharaja of Gwalior after his armies deserted to the rebel forces. They then occupied the strategic fort at Gwalior. However on the second day of fighting, on 18 June 1858, the Rani died. The so-called jumping point. The Rani is claimed to have jumped her horse from this point on the wall to the ground below and so make her escape. The figures in red and blue give an idea of the scale. This plus the rough and sloping ground below must surely mean that any horse would have been killed, not to mention the rider. The Rani was a good rider, but physics is physics. It is somewhat more likely that she left by the gate. She died on 18 June 1858 during the battle for Gwalior with 8 Huzas that took place in Kota Kisire near Fulbag area of Gwalior. She donned warrior's clothes and rode into battle to save Gwalior Fort, about 120 miles west of Lucknow in what is now the state of Uttar Pradesh. The British captured Gwalior three days later. In the report of the battle for Gwalior, 
General Sir Hugh Rose commented that the Rani, remarkable for her beauty, cleverness and perseverance, had been the most dangerous of all the rebel leaders. Cremation place of Rani Lakshmi Bai however, the lack of a corpse to be convincingly identified as the Rani convinced Captain Rees of the so-called, bravest, regiment that she had not actually perished in the battle for Gwalior, stating publicly that, the, Queen of Jhansi is alive. It is believed her funeral was arranged on same day near the spot where she was wounded. One of the her maidservants helped with the arrangement of quick funeral. Because of her bravery, courage, and wisdom, and her progressive views on women's empowerment in 19th century India, and due to her sacrifices, she became an icon of Indian independence movement. The Rani was memorialized in bronze statues at both Jhansi and Gwalior, both of which portray her on horseback. Her father, Moropant Tambe, was captured and hanged a few days after the fall of Jhansi. Her adopted son, Damodar Rao, was given a pension by the British Raj and cared for, although he never received his inheritance. Flight to Gwalior The leaders, the Rani of Jhansi, Tatya Tope, the Nawab of Banda, and Rao Sahib, fled once more. They came to Gwalior and joined the Indian forces who now held the city, Maharaja Sinda having fled to Agra from the battlefield at Mora. They moved on to Gwalior intending to occupy the strategic Gwalior fort and the rebel forces occupied the city without opposition. The rebels proclaimed Nana Sahib as Peshwa of a revived Maratha dominion with Rao Sahib as his governor, Subedar, in Gwalior. The Rani was unsuccessful in trying to persuade the other rebel leaders to prepare to defend Gwalior against a British attack which she expected would come soon. General Rosa's forces took Mora on 16 June and then made a successful attack on the city. The British captured the city of Gwalior after three days. In the British report of this battle, Hugh Rose commented that Rani Lakshmi Bai is personable, clever and beautiful, and she is the most dangerous of all Indian leaders. Rose reported that she had been buried, with great ceremony under a tamarind tree under the rock of Gwalior, where I saw her bones and ashes. Her tomb is in the Fool Bagh area of Gwalior. Twenty years after her death Colonel Mallison wrote in the History of the Indian Mutiny, Volume 3, London, 1878 Whatever her faults in British eyes may have been, her countrymen will ever remember that she was driven by ill treatment into rebellion, and that she lived and died for her country, we cannot forget her contribution for India. The letter is one of the few remaining artifacts from the Rani of Jhansi's life. The letter was written by Lakshmi Bai, Rani of Jhansi, shortly before the Indian Mutiny, or First War of Independence, in 1857. It has been found in London in the archives of the British Library. The Rani of Jhansi has often been called the Joan of Arc of the Indian independence struggle. Academics say the discovery of the letter is hugely significant because so little historical evidence from the Rani of Jhansi's lifetime exists. Descendant according to a memoir purporting to be by Damodar Rao, the young prince was among his mother's troops and household at the Battle of Gwalior. Together with others who had survived the battle, about 60 retainers with 60 camels and 22 horses, he fled from the camp of Rao Sahib of Bithur and as the village people of Bundelkhand dared not aid them for fear of reprisals from the British, they were forced to live in the forest and suffer many privations. After two years there were about 12 survivors and these, together with another group of 24 they encountered, sought the city of Jalrapatan where there were yet more refugees from Jhansi. Damodar Rao of Jhansi surrendered himself to a British official and his memoir ends in May 1860. He was then allowed a pension of 10,000 rupees, seven retainers, and was in the guardianship of Munshi Dharmanarayan. The whole memoir was published in Marathi in Kelkar, YN, 1959, Itihasachya Sahali, Voyages in History. It is likely that this text is a written version based on tales of the prince's life in oral circulation and that what actually happened to him remains unknown. Cultural depictions and statues Statues of Lakshmi Bai are seen in many places of India, which show her and her son tied to her back. Lakshmi Bai National University of Physical Education in Gwalior, Lakshmi Bai National College of Physical Education in Tiruvan and Tapuram, 
Maharani Lakshmi Bai Medical College in Jhansi are named after her. Rani Lakshmi Bai Central Agricultural University in Jhansi was founded in 2013. The Rani Jhansi Marine National Park is located in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands in the Bay of Bengal. A women's unit of the Indian National Army was named the Rani of Jhansi Regiment. In 1957 two postage stamps were issued to commemorate the centenary of the rebellion. Indian representations in novels, poetry, and film tend towards an uncomplicated valorization of Rani Lakshmi Bai as an individual solely devoted to the cause of Indian independence. The Indian Coast Guard ship ICGS Lakshmi Bai has been named after her. Rani Lakshmi Bai became a national heroine and was seen as the epitome of female bravery in India. When the Indian National Army created its first female unit, it was named after her. Indian poetess Subhadra Kumari Chauhan wrote a poem in the Veer Ras style about her, which is still recited by children in schools of contemporary India. In a prophetic statement in the 1878 book The History of the Indian Mutiny, Colonel Mallison said, Dot her countrymen will always believe that she was driven by ill treatment into rebellion, that her cause was a righteous cause. To them she will always be a heroine in 2011, the Time magazine listed Lakshmi Bai as one of the top 10 badass wives of all time. Songs and poems A number of patriotic songs have been written about the Rani. The most famous composition about Rani Lakshmi Bai is the Hindi poem Jansi Ki Rani written by Subhadra Kumari Chauhan. An emotionally charged description of the life of Rani Lakshmi Bai, it is often taught in schools in India. A popular stanza from it reads, Bundele har bolon ke muh humne suni kahani thi, khub ladi mardani wo to jhansi wali rani thi. Translation, from the bards of Bundela we have heard this story, she fought valiantly like a warrior woman, she was the queen of Jhansi. For Marathi people there is an equally well-known ballad about the brave queen penned at the spot near Gwalior where she died in battle, by B. R. Tambe, who was a poet laureate of Maharashtra and of her clan. A couple of stanzas run like this, Re Hind Bandhva, Tham Thati Ashru Don Dhati, Ti Parakramachi Jyot Mavathe Ithe Jhashivali. Ghodyavar Khandyaswar, Hatat Nangi Tarwar, Khankhana Karitti Var, Goryachi Kondi Fodit Padit Veer Ithe Ali, Mardani Jhashivali. Translation, you, denizen of this land, pause here and shed a tear or two, for this is where the flame of the valorous lady of Jhansi was extinguished. Astride a stalwart stallion, with a naked sword in hand, she burst open the British siege and came to rest here, the brave lady of Jhansi. Dear audiences, we want your support to grow our channel. Without your kind support, we are nothing. Please do like, subscribe, share and comment. Thanks a lot.